More, Lord. More, 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 more. You could have more of God. More, Jesus. More. More, Lord. Give him more, Lord. Give him more in Jesus' name. This is what you're stirring up in the body of Christ. Stop. More, Lord. 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 More. 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 More, Lord. We want more. We're hungry for more. Increase. Hush. Increase more. Hush. Thank you, Jesus. Hush. More, Lord. More. 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 Hush. 365. More God. 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 More, Lord. More. More. More, Lord. Here are all the Bible verses that tell us to always be hungry and desperate and to keep asking God for more. No rooms, more Lord. No rooms, more Lord. <laughs> Fill him up. Lord, give us more. Come on, say it. we want more, Lord. More, Lord, more, Mas, more, more, Mas. more. Mass. More, 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 Mas. more. Mass. More. More, God. More, Lord. More, Lord. More Holy Spirit. More God. More God. More God. More God. More God. More God. Stir 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 God. More. 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 I want more God. I'm hungry. I'm desperate. I need more and 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 more. More, 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 more. We want our children and our grandchildren to be raised in a spiritual culture where there's always more. So the word more is in the Bible 548 times, in the ESV version anyway, and I went through the entire thing in my fancy Bible software, and I didn't find any verses that said you should ask God for more, and when you get more, you should ask for more yet again. Here's a verse that some people think is kind of saying the same thing from Matthew 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. That last part doesn't quite fit. Here's the right way to do it, according to these people. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall not be satisfied. Ask for more. Even changing it in that silly way doesn't work, because this says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This doesn't say, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for his presence, or his anointing, or his fire, or any of those things. There is an accelerating anointing even in this room. Take it, take it, take it. Let's look at just a few of the ways that Jesus used the word more. How about if we look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Or look at the next one down, Matthew 7:11. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Shouldn't this verse really say something like, yeah, your Father in heaven will give good things to those who ask him after they've shown themselves to be hungry and desperate enough? But even then, that, that shouldn't be enough. They should be asking for more. More, 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 more. Well, I'm going to go quickly here through the rest of the Gospels and through the book of Acts because I want to show you some verses in the epistles, starting with a few things that the Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans. Here we go. Romans 5, 9. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. 
Romans 5.10. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Romans 5.15. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. Okay, I just want to scoot ahead here. The, um, the word more is used quite a bit, especially the phrase more and more. Paul used that a lot. But I want to get to something that I found here from the first chapter of Philippians verse 9. Actually, verse 9, 10, and 11. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I wanted you to hear some actual Bible verses so that you could compare God's Word to when people say things like this. We want our six-year-olds and our 20-year-olds and our 30-year-olds to think that's normal, to press for more. More, Lord! More, Lord! More, Lord! More, Lord! More, Father God! Fresh anointing and fire! Touch the viewers right now in the name of Jesus! More! And we and say, say, more, Lord! More, Lord! Lord. <laughs> more, Lord. Lord. Okay, let's scoot through some of these epistles, and I want to show you a little bit more. Here we go. Look at what the Apostle Paul says to young Pastor Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.16. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, the next part of the verse says, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Yikes. God's word does not mince words when it comes to false teachers and false teachings. More. More, Lord. More, Lord. I need you to say that right now. More, Lord. More, Lord. And he spans the flame on that fire. <sighs> and thou shalt blow unto thy microphone, and thy spirit shall cause great manifestations at thy conference centers. Gyrations 3.16. Shoo, man, glory. So strong up here. More, Lord, more, Lord, more angels ascending and descending from this, this place over her. More, God. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord! And I pray the same prayer that was prayed over my church when we came forward and then all heaven broke loose. More, more! That famous prayer, oh God. More, Lord. More. I think he's got it. Shake up, Baba! Fire! Place it on another one's head. Fire! Shh. Legacy! Legacy! Fill them up in Jesus' name. Let's take a look at a few verses in the book of Hebrews. You see the word more used a lot in that book as well. This book was written to Jewish Christians who were tempted to go back to their Jewish roots and abandon the sufficiency of what Christ has done. Look at Hebrews 9.14. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Look at Hebrews 10.17. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. So there are all sorts of great verses that use the word more. They're just not saying more, Lord, more. I want to show you one here from 2 Peter 1.19. But I want to read the whole passage, not just the one verse. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this very voice from heaven. For we were with him on the holy mountain. Remember, this is Peter talking. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And then there's a whole section about false prophets and teachers. Hey! 
So if God really wanted us to be desperate and hungry and constantly asking for more and never satisfied, don't you think he would have told us something like that in his holy word, the Bible? I mean, Christians believe this is God's word, yet we've got so-called Christian teachers teaching things that aren't in God's word. This passage sometimes gets used to promote the more Lord, more doctrine. As the deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember. As I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of praise a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. This is a lament of David when he was being pursued by his enemies, he was sick, and he was away from the temple. He was looking forward to the day when he could go back to worshiping God in the temple. This would be, in today's Christian world, the equivalent of wanting to go to church. And going to church should be the one place where we are satisfied, where we worship God, and we are at peace. It should be the last place where weird and manipulative stuff is taking place, like this. More, Lord! More, Lord! Give him more, Lord! More, Lord, more, God, more, Lord. Fill her, Lord. Fill her, God. Fill him, Lord. Fill him, God. More, Lord. More, God. More. Fill him. More! More to Fire of heaven! heaven. We are hungry for your presence. Oh, more. Por tu more, 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 more. More, Lord, more. 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 More, Lord. More. 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 Lord, more. Lord, more. Lord, more. Lord, more. More, God. We are hungry. And how many of you know there's more? God has done much here, but there is more. And the only way to keep what we have is to go after more every single day. Amen. Michael Culliano says, God has done much here, but there is more. And the only way to keep what we have is to go after more every single day. This is what you could easily call a pseudo profundity. Here's a really interesting article I found in Psychology Today from 2011, Pseudo Profundity. Around the globe, audiences sit at the feet of marketing experts, lifestyle consultants, mystics, cult leaders, and other gurus waiting for the next deep and profound insight. People often pay a great deal of money to hear these words of wisdom. So how do these elevated individuals come by their penetrating insights? What is the secret of their profundity? Unfortunately, in some cases, the audience is duped by the dark arts of pseudo-profundity. The art of sounding profound is fairly easily mastered. You too can make deep and meaningful sounding pronouncements if you are prepared to follow a few simple rules. He says the first step to sounding profound is to say something very obvious but to say it very slowly. But here's the second part which is really interesting. Another secret of pseudo-profundity is to pick two words that have opposite or incompatible meanings and combine them cryptically like so. Sanity is just another kind of madness. Life is often a form of death. The ordinary is extraordinary. Try it yourself. You'll soon start sounding deep. God has done much here, but there is more. And the only way to keep what we have is to go after more every single day. Amen. Here's my attempt to summarize this teaching. God wants to give us something, fire, anointing, tongues, his presence, intimacy, some sort of a charismatic thing. But God won't give it until we beg him, a lot. When you don't get that thing, it's always your fault. If you do get it, you must immediately be unsatisfied and start begging for more. Continue this incoherent and useless process until, well, you either die or you disregard this very burdensome teaching. Of course, Michael Koulianos is simply repeating the ideas he's learned from people like his father-in-law, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Rodney Howard Brown, Randy Clark, and other leaders of the various revival movements that had their heyday back in the 1990s. Although all of these leaders have talked about and predicted the great end times revival that would spread around the world right before the return of Christ, none of that has taken place. But you better be hungry. You better be desperate. 
And if you're not hungry and desperate, ask God to make you hungry and desperate, and then maybe, just maybe, God will finally send the revival. You know, the revival that isn't in the Bible that God wants to send. I used my fancy Bible software and I typed in the word revival. The word doesn't exist in the Bible. Now the word revived or revive or reviving, those words do exist. And some version of that is used 20 times in the entire Bible. But in the New Testament, you know, the book that teaches us about the Christian life and the Christian church, there's this one verse. And it's just Paul saying to the Philippians, I'm glad that you have revived your concern for me. So no revivalism in the Bible. And yet you're being told you better be hungry and desperate for a big revival. This is the recipe for a never-ending stream of conferences, books, ministry schools, and frankly, an industry that could be called the revival business. This whole idea ignores the fact that Christianity has survived for almost 2,000 years because of the establishment of the church. The Christian church is the rock built by Christ that withstands the storms of time. Revivalism is the ambiguous movement that uses emotional manipulation to sweep up its followers. It requires hypnotic worship bands with singers that can work the crowd into a frenzy. The most effective of these leaders are those who appear to be totally lost in their own personal worship time on stage, performing in front of thousands of fans. Now, I'm not saying that I know for sure who is and who isn't sincere in this movement. I'm just saying that it places very unrealistic and demanding expectations on people. One of the worst being this idea that we should continually ask God for more of something that probably wasn't even defined clearly to begin with. Hush. Along with the celebrity worship leaders, there are the celebrity Christian speakers who get top billing because of their ability to appear humble as they soak in the adoration of the crowd. And at the foundation of this bizarre and unbiblical movement is the demand that we all must constantly ask for more. If Christians were ever to be told that they can simply enjoy their lives in peaceful simplicity, this whole revival industry would fall apart. If Christians were ever to grasp that Christ has already done the hard work of securing our redemption by his atoning death on the cross, these gigantic theatrical productions would stop. But the false teaching that something bigger and better is right around the corner is the glue that holds this whole thing together. You've been told that regular Christians are kind of bad, and radical Christians are really good. And who defines a radical Christian? The guy on stage with the microphone and the book deal. You can't be a radical, on-fire Christian without the assistance of the guru and his backup band. And when you finally think you've reached the radical level of Christianity, they tell you to ask for more. But God doesn't exhaust his children on this spiritual hamster wheel. These false teachers do. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here's what Jesus said in John 14, 27. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.7